Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to make uh, a Christmas cake. This is going to be um, uh, what's called a last minute Christmas cake and it has mincemeat in it uh, as well as dried fruit. And this is a recipe that I got from uh, Delia Smith's uh, online site. And it looks very, very simple takes a little bit of time because you have to soak the fruit for a few hours um, but it's very easy to make and it's one that can be done now and will be perfect for eating at Christmas it can be done the day before Christmas um, as opposed to my normal Christmas cake which I make uh, six to eight weeks in advance of Christmas so that I can feed it so um, it's quite simple and the ingredients are uh, 400 grams which is just just about one jar um, of uh, mincemeat and I measured this out uh, so I could tell you in cups as well that's one and one third cups of mincemeat um, and then I have 50 grams of glacé cherries which again is 10 whole glacé cherries chopped into quarters um, and I have 50 grams of chopped mixed peel um, which is about a third of a cup. I have three large eggs which I'm not cracking yet. Three large eggs that would be extra large in the USA. I have 150 grams which is three quarters of a cup of dark brown muscovado sugar or soft dark brown sugar. If you can't get the dark then light would be okay. I have 225 grams of self-raising flour and that is one and three quarters cups. I have um, 110 grams, two thirds of a cup of um, soft dried prunes or soft dried plums, which I have uh, chopped into smaller pieces. Um, you can chop them r roughly chopped, basically. Then uh, I have 175 grams of dried mixed fruit, which is one and three quarter cups or I should have said this is two thirds of a cup of the dried prune, uh, prunes if I didn't say that. I have three teaspoons of baking powder. I have one and a half teaspoons of mixed spice and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Then I have um, 50 grams, sorry, yes, 50 grams of um, Brazil nuts which I have chopped into uh, smaller pieces roughly chopped again and I have 50 grams of um, chopped or mixed nuts which I've chopped and that mixed nuts tends to have walnuts cashews almonds and hazelnuts in it in my mixture so that's um, a third of a cup and that was about half a cup um, so but 100 grams of those nuts would be fine I have um, 150 grams, uh, which is 10 and a half tablespoons of spreadable butter or softened butter. And then I have, I'm going to use the zest of one orange and the zest of one lemon. And I think that's about all the ingredients. So what I'm going to do just very quickly is to put the mixed spice, the baking powder and the salt into uh, the flour and I'll give that a quick stir around that's then going to be set aside uh, for at least four hours or even overnight so that's that I'm putting everything else aside except for the fruit ah I didn't mention this ingredient which is brandy that's 150 milliliters which is half a cup plus two tablespoons of brandy and so what I'm going to do is to put my fruit, so that's the, the prunes, the chopped mixed peel, the mixed dried fruit, and the glacé cherries into a larger bowl. And I'm going to add into that the mincemeat. meat. 
and then that brandy. I'm going to stir that all around. get things combined and then I'm going to leave that to soak for at least four hours. Um, now you could do this overnight and it's to allow the brandy to be absorbed very largely by the dried fruits. So that's nicely stirred around so I'm going to cover that with a clean tea towel and I'm going to leave that for at least four hours um, after which time we can come back and we can make the cake. Um, so I'll be back when that uh, fruit has soaked nicely and by that time I'll have my oven preheating at 170 celsius that's 340 celsius with a fan and i will have an eight inch uh, cake tin with a removable bottom i'm going to use my spring form pan um, which i'm going to grease and line the bottom and the sides with parchment paper and that will be ready to take the mixture so i'll be back when the fruit has soaked and we're ready to go on to uh, making the cake batter and then baking the cake. So it's now been um, over four hours and uh, my fruit has been soaking. So I've set that to one side and I now have a larger bowl and into that bowl I'm going to put the flour with the spices and the baking powder and salt and then I'm going to add into that the eggs, the sugar and the butter. And then I'm going to whisk those with my hand mixer until it's all nice and smooth and fluffy. So I'll start the mixer on slow and then as the flour gets incorporated I mix it a bit faster. So that's nicely mixed and that took a, a couple of minutes and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add uh, the chopped nuts and the Brazil nuts, chopped Brazil nuts and the uh, zest of the lemon and the orange and all this fruit with the liquid into this and mix it in. I'm going to fold it in and I'm going to do it actually probably a little bit at a time. Um, to start with and I'll put, the, put the zest in at this stage I just want to fold this in And then I'm going to put the, the rest in. And fold that in as well. My oven is preheating, as I told you earlier, at 300, uh, 340 Fahrenheit, 170 Celsius. And I should have said, I also have here uh, 
about 20 Brazil nuts, 20 pecans and 20 walnut halves, pecan halves and walnut halves. And I'm going to put those on top. You can do that in any pattern you want, basically, if you want to decorate the top of it. So with that cake batter folded in, I'm going to put that into my cake tin. which is lined and I have, because I'm using this spring form tin, I've put the parchment paper coming up over the rim just in case the cake rises above that because my deep cake tins are only seven inches in diameter and I wanted an eight inch tin. I think seven inches would bake just as well. It would be slightly smaller in diameter but um, taller as well so with that I'm going to shake it whoops and then I'm going to put my nuts on top just like that and I'm going to put that into the oven and I'm going to bake it for two hours um, until the top feels springy to the touch then I'll take it out of the oven and let it cool down for 30 minutes in the tin before I take it out of the tin and then I'll come back and we're going to brush the top with uh, uh, about a tab heap tablespoon of apricot jam mixed with a tablespoon of brandy just to give it a glaze and then it will cool down completely on the wire rack so I'll be back when it's baked and it's started to cool down I baked our cake for exactly two hours and I did forget to say that I was going to put um, a double sheet of parchment paper over the top of the cake with a hole uh, a small hole cut in the middle um, that's just to protect it from the direct heat a little bit so I did that uh, for the entire time that it was baking uh, it was springy to the touch and I tested it with a skewer which came out clean and this is what it looks like now I've taken it out of the tin but I've left it on the uh, bottom plate at the moment because it's still uh, very warm. I'll turn it off later. But what I'm going to do is I've heated my heaped tablespoon of apricot jam with a tablespoon of brandy and I'm just going to brush that over the top. to give it a, a nice shiny glaze and that's all there is to it really I'm going to let that cool down completely before I take it off the base of the cake tin and I'm not going to cut that because that's what I'm going to eat at Christmas so once it's cooled down I will wrap it in aluminium foil and put it into an airtight container and leave that until uh, next week Christmas Day and then we'll eat it on Christmas Day so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have please give me the thumbs up uh, below the video and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen there will be an eye that you can click on which will take you to this recipe and I'll put a link to it below the video as well. And I will be back with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.